So we're, we're gathering again today, and uh, we have Tim from uh, Tim from uh, Xerox Park. Park yes. For Park, it's not Xerox <laughs> Park anymore. It's just Park, right? And uh, he brought us a uh, manual, so the original Alto manual That's right. handbook. So we'll, uh, that that will solve a lot of problems, right? We'll know how to use the machine just from the manual. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and we have nice Ken with us over here and Carl. All right, let's let's get to work. I'm I'm here. <laughs> let's get to work. It looks like we have hit a little snag. Here's our disc controller card. Mm -hmm. So we have the Trident disc interface, as you can see from the writing here. Oh, okay. But that doesn't go into Diablo. our Diablo here, which has the, which is the other cable. So, uh, okay. Mark. So, Ken, you'll find us another disk drive interface so card, right? We can trade this <laughs> one in for the one we want. So here it is, folks, the Computer History Museum hallway, and I'm told the mailboxes are here. And it's alphabetical order. KK Coso, Al Coso, and here we go. As advertised, an Alto interface card has materialized. Now where else would this happen than in Silicon Valley? So I take it, that's, uh, yeah, it looks exactly like it, yes. Here we go. I'll to to disk control. So that's our, that's our Diablo card. Thank you, Al. I think it's just, yeah, I'm not sure how that works. Yeah. Hopefully it's something that's going to catch us right. Exactly, yeah. What should I do? Does this pop off? I don't think it pops off. It does. It does. It does. The ones I had seen had a screw in them, so this is some might be a, a late market filter or something. Um, so this thing looks marvelously clean. This drive has not had a lot of a lot of running since this filter was put in. Wow, it's it's all because I would have expected us to have to blow it out and do other things. Look at that. Oh, oh the foam is. The de deteriorating, yes. So yes. should we just... I pull the foam and we'll get a different out. foam and put it on. Because that's that's one of the problems you're going to find inside here is all yeah, this foam and stuff be. that, that um, you know, creates seals for the air path yeah. is bad. Right. Show us the filter. It's like, yeah, we think we, I think you should replace that. That's over. Yeah. 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 I think most people, they just... They just do it for okay, the and it shoots there. Uh, I don't think Coach we have any screw in this. Uh, okay. okay, here's our beauty. It looks like this whole thing. Yeah, they pop up. Left, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can pull them up and let them oh, out. Wow. I think it's. Mine had just pulled up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there we go. Let's Ooh, see. Oh. see, for serviceability there. I, I, I wish I had that in in my hard drive. <laughs> oh, right here. I see it. Yeah. Look on the disc on. Rotate the disc slightly. It has see the little sector, little slits. Oh, it's very small, little slits. So that later would become the hole in the floppy, right? And here's the detector for it. After about four or five years after this generation, IBM decided to write a servo track on a top surface that would be oh, okay. bearing. And after that, it was sort of self-aligning. But in, mm. in this era, you'd have to do this and then 
carefully align every drive to exactly the same location so you could interchange media between Great. disk switches. bottom head is beautiful. I mean, it is really beautiful condition. That's good. There's like the teeniest bit of oxide, but it looks like it was probably clean just before it was decommissioned. Oh. So if you see there, there's like a little, looks like a cross-shaped groove, mm -hmm. which, which is where the actual head okay. poles come out. Picking some dust here. I mean, it's, it's just not really visible. Oh, 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 but I have, I have the tool for you. Good. I have the little... You have the camera on the fiber optic, or is this the... Uh, much the better. Mirror, the mirror, okay. The mirror. Okay. How does it look, doctor? Looks very good. It's a pretty, good shape. pretty nice, clean drive. Clean. So this was floating around the drive. Uh, fortunately, we caught it. Now we have to find where it comes from. It's not good if it hits the head. So that's that's the seal that goes to the disc opening, and that yeah, foam is just bad. Yeah, yeah it, it, it it's so, turning. And, it's and liquefying. Right. So the plasticizer is liquefied there. And then the worst case is it goes from that to becoming friable, and then it just. Yeah, yeah. Carl tells me the air comes to, no, the clean air through the HEPA filter comes through that opening. And, and this uh, phone you're looking at seals here. Right, and, and that was it. the one in there. And if you can put some light on it, and it's bad, right? It's, it's liquefying and it will fall apart and put dirt into the disc. So we have to remove it and put some new one. Okay, so we take the enclosure so nothing falls in the plane. Oh my, that foam is just... But you're going to try to find okay, it. Okay, why, why don't I vacuum it off? If I can. If you can, yeah. Film this one. I think I should probably cut it off camera. Okay. So it looks like we have repaired the seal correctly. There we go. Okay. So, so no streaks of iron oxide. Very okay. good sign. Very clean. They looked very clean when we looked at them. And you can you can pick up the the planner actually. Yeah. Yeah. How does it look, Master? Looks great. Just got a little cleaning up. Flying, flying saucer. Okay, so it'll be the cleaner for that one. Does it make music yet? Oh, you want more? No, close it up. Close okay. It. So you can see, not too dirty. Yeah. It no, looks it, it looks pristine. Yeah. Yeah. You clean that one too. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. And you can see the sector slots now. Oh, the, and then oh, there's two together, idea. which is the the index point, which yeah. says is that no, no, this where there are two. Okay, so so every sector has a slot, huh? Mm -hmm. I know that. Uh, no, we won't meet to it this way. There you go. Okay, good. So this is going to be the first part on for the boards too. For the boards, for not everything, but okay, we another scary moment. Okay, so the hands going. 
Nope, we got it. We got we got something out. here. We got a raster? We do have a raster. Okay. It's, it's light all the way down. It's white. And we have just not very power bright. and load for this. Okay. Now it won't load when I close it. Oh yeah, it. it's it's very, very dim uh Ron. And as you know. I removed your tape. Light off. Okay, well we yeah. Need it. Oh yeah, it's on. It's yeah, in I think. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, it's got it. It's got so a we have a white monitor over there. And this should not spin up good, it didn't. Okay, so we load the cartridge, I guess, is the next step. The lights are on. Power lights are on. So Off we go. Okay, and then okay, activate it. You turn on run. So yeah. I want to watch okay. it blow and make sure stuff happens and then stop it a couple of times before yeah. we actually let it go. It went kind of dim in front. Wow, I hear it. Yeah. Spinning it. Okay, so just cycling it a couple of times. Yeah, okay. Uh, it would be nice if we can verify that there's air blowing out. So the check, not to put it like that. Okay, go for it. So air blows out the back of it. Yeah. Is it just the um, this disc spinning? This is centrifugal. I think it's just an impeller. Yeah. Okay. So there's no separate impeller. It's just not that I know of. We're going to go check to be sure. Seems to be blowing. It's usually like 90 seconds to get some. Uh, so you expect the heads to come out? And yes. I expect it to load at the end. So once it loads, it slows down to its 1500 RPM. There it is. It's loading. Oh, it's spinning down though. No, it's good. It's ready. It's just maintaining. It's just maintaining it's, speed. It's ready. Servo speed. Yeah. See, it is. Yep. Now I'm gonna unload it. Okay. Popped up. Wow. And we have no marks on the surface. Wow. Maybe ready to plug the head in. Okay. Plug the head in. Now, now that means we're gonna assume that none of these electronics have gone crazy and yeah, that are gonna try to mess it up. Right. Yeah. Right, and we are going to make that assumption, guys? Yes. Okay. I assume success. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Okay. Okay. okay, let's see. Yeah, so I just mm -hmm. from the beginning. Yeah. Definitely, that works. So the head just dropped it near it in the seat, right? Sorry? The head just dropped. Just watch it, you'll see it. But it didn't seek, it didn't go to track one or whatever. No, it doesn't. It, it just drops in position to start. And yeah, this is what you expect. Well, on the 1130, it seeks out first. Huh. So it could be a problem with the controller not. Yeah, you know, not knowing they have to go from this disc. I heard it. It's on. It is sick. Something happened. Yeah. So it was good to uh, get the disc going and uh, the heads to load without any head crash, and the monitor is working good enough uh, for us to see some action. But uh, unfortunately, and, and not very surprisingly, uh, it didn't boot. So we left it at that. Uh, and now the tough part of the restoration begins. Uh, we were trying to debug the logic of the machine.